Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Like I promised, I would be getting back to you, Jade King, and your absolutely ridiculous article on how Resident Evil 4, the remake, no longer sexualizes women. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, shall we? Alright, this isn't even remotely close to my first attempt at covering this fucking horrendous article. It's, it's just difficult because I tend to go on a massive rant because of how stupid this fucking thing is. So now I have to script it a lot more than I normally like to. I like to be more off the top, you know, just read through the argument, read through what the person is saying or watch what the person is saying and then argue like right, right out of my own head. Like I don't want to like write things down and script it. That's just not the type of content I like to make. I like to make it more natural, I suppose. But I have to script this one, otherwise I will make a three hour long video on how this Jade King is an absolute joke to game journalism and how ridiculous this article is. All right, so let's get started with one of the very first points that Jade King makes. So Jade King wants to talk specifically about how Ashley is unable to defend herself. She is not somebody who knows how to fight. She doesn't know how to use a weapon, I assume. There's good reasoning behind that there, Jade King. And it's not sexism at work. This isn't, as you like to say, that women are just in the series to be protected and sexualized and are just the inferior versions of the male counterpart. That's not at all what this is. This is... For one, a lore standpoint, and two, a gameplay standpoint. That's why it's done, okay? We'll talk about the gameplay standpoint first. Okay, The gameplay is that you don't have a co-op partner like you do in RE5, the next game over, because it doesn't want you to have an easier game, basically. It's trying... The entire point of Ashley as a, as a character is essentially to hinder you. It is to make the game harder for you to play. It's to make the game harder to complete. That's the entire point of Ashley. Alright. Now from a lore standpoint. Understand that Ashley is the daughter of the president. I really, really highly doubt that Ashley has much um, time spent training in any type of hand-to-hand -hand combat. I really doubt she has much time training with firearms, and I would venture to guess she has almost absolutely no training or experience in dealing with bio my fucking uh my fucking biological fucking weapon weaponized monsters, right? Like I really doubt that she's ever seen these things before in her life. So to sit here and say that the only reason that Ashley's incapable of defending herself is because, you know, men want to be protectors and we're all sexist bullshit, it's so fucking far-fetched. It's so disingenuous. And I think you know that. I think you're just a disingenuous fucking person. I just think that you want to make articles like this because you want to be the victim at all times. But in the same breath, at the end of that, of that paragraph, you then say that you call Ashley horny. So, horny for Leon, I guess. Where? Like, there's literally one, one tiny fucking joke that you could take as her awkwardly hitting on Leon, who then immediately refuses. Like, oh, God, it hurts me so bad. She literally has one moment in the very end of the game where you to have uh when you're on the jet ski and you get out to the fucking main ocean and you're sitting there as everything blows up she what does she say like want to work some overtime or some shit like it's a very awkward little little innuendo for for him that she wants to hit on him a little bit like i don't even see a problem with this like playing through it when i first played through it and like, heard that line, I laughed at it and, like, kind of cringed because it was just such an awkward, weird thing to say. But I never once thought it was, like, sexist in any way. It's 
it's just some younger girl trying to hit on this special agent fucking ripped fucking chat of a unit man who just fucking slaughtered hundreds of people to keep her safe like it kind of just makes sense but hey i guess you know we all we're all just really really sexist right i'd love to know how jade king picks partners uh, uh, under the assumption that she is a straight woman I wonder how she would pick partners because I don't know like how you couldn't you couldn't accept the fact that yes most likely that would lead to some form of attraction at least in the moment like somebody putting their life on the line repeatedly for you and Leon is a good looking dude like he's the ladies man of the fucking series and then this dude fucking puts his life on the line for you for hours and saves your life, rescue, rescues you out of a fucking terrible situation where you are going to die. Like, how is it so, like, mind-blowing to you that she might hit on him in the end? How ridiculous. You then end that paragraph with talking about, like, the fact that this isn't the first misstep in sexism that Capcom has done in viewing women as tools for sexualization and then being the lesser counterparts or the lesser versions of their male counterparts. That's so far from the truth that it is just ridiculous. You are either an inherently disingenuous person that is just trying to create a dishonest argument and hoping that nobody notices it, or you just have never played any of the Resident Evil games, ever. But we'll get back to that point. We'll get back to that towards the end of the article because you bring it up again. So we'll just cover all of that all at once at the end. Back on to Leon and Ashley. You complain that Leon is an aggressive protector, making Ashley hide while he does all the work and fighting. How is that sexist? Like, what is that, what are you not getting through your head that this is the daughter of the president of the United States? Like the definition of a VIP. Right? You don't let the VIPs get into the combat situations to begin with. But you sure as fuck don't let the VIP that is the president's daughter, the entirety of the reason you are here, you do not let that person get into harm's way in any way. You keep them as far from danger as you can because that is your fucking mission. How is this like a controversy in your mind? Leon is the special trained secret fucking agent, stare like old like 90, 80s 90s stereotype fucking big bad hero that's able to take on hundreds of fucking people with no problem right like he's the superhero in this he's the dude who is fucking supposed to be well trained and capable Ashley's just some random fucking teenage girl what is she I, I'm really confused on the canon I could have sworn she was like 18 but I guess now in the remake she's 20 I don't know either way she's a very on the younger side female who is the president's daughter again i really doubt that she has any time in her experience in hand-to-hand -hand combat firearms training or encountering fucking bow's all right it makes complete sense from a lore standpoint alone that leon fights while she hides that makes complete sense from a writing standpoint not only that but it's done this way on purpose. It's done this way for a gameplay reason. You could literally replace Ashley with the son of the president of the United States. It wouldn't matter to me. I don't give a fuck what gender the fucking character is. It doesn't fucking matter in the slightest. The entire point from a gameplay perspective is to make it more difficult on you. It's to make, it's to create a character that is nothing but a hindrance on you. You are forced to protect this character, you're supposed to manage their health bars, keep them out of danger, you have to fight everything. Meanwhile, not only do you have to worry about attacks coming for you, you have to worry about people attacking her or grabbing her and trying to fucking break, make a break for it with her. Like, all of these things add to the level of stress that you have to undergo playing the game. Like, how, did you not play it? Is that what this is? Like, you've never played Resident Evil 4? Especially the, the original? Because you seem to really want to shit talk the original when there isn't a whole lot of difference in terms of like how everything is portrayed from the original to the remake. Not like with Ashley anyway. She's about the exact same fucking character, isn't she? 
I'm just not understanding how this is like a controversy to you. It makes sense from a lore standpoint and a fucking gameplay standpoint. I think you're just really, really, really trying to stretch for an argument. You're really trying to reach out for something that isn't there. You're trying to fight this imaginary sexist boogeyman that doesn't fucking exist. Not in this fucking series, I'll tell you that much. And of course, the last thing that you're going to address really with Ashley and Leon is the fact that you can't look up Ashley's skirt. Like, holy fuck. Yeah, I know. Some people randomly on the internet have been upset you can't look at Ashley, look up Ashley's skirt. They call it censorship. I think it's just the game being more mature. Like, in the original, as, as you all like to really put it, you say it's campy and it's full of, like, immature-ass jokes. Okay, it, yeah, that's part of one of the immature-ass jokes that you can do. That's just, I think that's just all it is. It's an immature, fucking stupid-ass joke that you can look up her skirt. She calls you a pervert. Just move on with your fucking life. It was 2004 that this happened. 2004, and we are still complaining about this. It's ridiculous. And I get the other side is also claiming it's censorship. I don't really give a fuck. I don't care. It never even crossed my mind to try and look up Ashley's skirt. It didn't cross my mind on the original. I only know about it because both sides seem to be arguing about it whenever this game gets brought up for being sexist. It's not even a good argument. It's a shitty fucking immature joke. That's it. End of fucking argument. Also, the rest of her outfit you think has evolved to make her less sexualized? I Like, what about her outfit in the original was sexualized? She didn't show cleavage. She didn't fucking have a short, short skirt. Like, she had a fucking sweater and a scarf and a plaid skirt. She looked like she attended an all-fucking-girls boarding school. Like some high-class Ivy League fucking female-only boarding school is, like, the vibe that I got from her in both games, actually. The only difference between her outfit and the original to this one is I feel like it somehow makes her look more mature in this one. She looks kind of older. I don't really know what that is about. Uh, but I think, I feel like her outfit in this is just something, she almost, almost, almost looks like something a professor would wear, you know, like, someone older than what she is. But... I don't know. I, I don't see any real difference other than that in the outfits. I've never once ever heard of anybody sexualizing Ashley or thinking like about her in some sexual way. I've never once seen or heard of this. The only thing I ever hear about Ashley as a character is the fact that she's hands down, in, at least in almost everybody's top five, most annoying side characters in the entire fucking world. Probably only beaten by Sherry from Resident Evil 2. Like, that's the only thing I ever hear about Ashley. I never hear about people fucking getting all hornied up for Ashley and sexualizing her. Like, it's fucking even weird that I have to clarify this. I've never seen an example of this in my life. The only thing you can bring up is the fact that you could look up her skirt. Or maybe you want to bring up the fact that there was a fucking joke that uh, Luce made about ballistics, right? That old fucking stupid-ass joke that... By the way, I've seen a lot of people, specifically on the left, complain that isn't even in there because it was just so stupid that it's funny, right? Again, it's it's just part of the game originally. Like, the, the original was just super over the top and immature in its own right, and it worked for it. You're just picking out little, since, little situations in which that it suits your arguments when it really doesn't like it'll it suits your arguments if it's somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about like somebody who didn't play the game or doesn't play video games right somebody else who is not familiar with this can read this article and be like wow that's terrible but anybody who's played the game and knows anything about video games especially game journalism right now is going to look through this and realize that half the shit you're saying is absolute bullshit it's made up. It's a figment of your fucking imagination because you want to be the fucking victim all the goddamn time. Moving on. We're getting to Ada now. You want to talk about Ada. This entire fucking article so far, you have complained that the, the game of Resident Evil 4 and the entire series seems to have weak women that are just tools for sexualization and they're viewed as the weak counterparts. The weak versions of the male counterparts. I keep saying that wrong. 
but then you bring up Ada. Like, how do you do? How do you make those two statements? How do you make that statement and then bring up Ada later in, in the uh, in the article? Again, I just don't think you played the game. I don't think you played the original either. I don't think you've played any Resident Evil. Ada is like the definition of a strong female character. Just in this game alone, in this game alone, if you play separate ways in the original, I don't even know if it has separate ways come out for RE4 remake. I don't know. But in the original, in separate ways, you will see that Ada saves Leon twice and then throws him a rocket launcher in the final boss fight. Leon saves her one time. You want to talk about being the, the damsel in distress? I know that's a terminology you guys love to fucking use, right? Being the damsel in distress. It is not that fucking girl. <laughs> it is the fucking opposite of that shit. It literally saves him twice and then is the main helping point of killing the final boss. Just like she was in Resident Evil 2. So, in total, I think, the score for Leon and Ada helping each other out, I don't know about 6, so I'll just have to go off a 2 and 4, because again, there's this big back and forth between the two, they're always helping each other and saving each other's asses, regardless of the fact that she's a woman and he's a man, they both save each other's asses, and I think Ada beats him by quite a bit, even if you, in, even if you take into account RE6, I just don't remember it offhand, but I know Leon saves her once, in Resident Evil 2, uh, Leon saves her once in RE4, Ada saves him, if we include the rocket launcher throws, once in RE2, and three times in RE4. So that's that's <laughs> a very big difference, isn't it? Ada ends up saving Leon, the male character, a hell of a lot more than he goes and saves that poor damsel in distress. Ah, oh, it's so ridiculous. Like, I don't... I'm convinced you've never played any of the Resident Evil series, but you want to talk about she apparently has had an evolution. An evolution of what? Ada is like no different in this game than what she's been throughout the entire series. She's always been this strong, mysterious, and viewed as sexy woman. Like she's always been that. She's always this mysterious woman dressed in these nice, fine fucking dresses, and like her style's always very unique. She's always wearing some type of red. Like she's supposed to be this again strong sexy mysterious woman that's like her personality it's not it's not written in there to be sexualized just because she is sexy doesn't mean she's sexualized right there's a difference there she's sexy because of the way she conducts herself again mysterious and dominant like i i don't understand how you can sit here and say that all of this series has weak women that are just there for sexualization and then also say that the strong female is also there for our, for just male sexualization. So like what if a woman is in a video game it's just automatic automatically sexualization is that what you mean? Cuz Ada is the definition of a strong woman and you still think she's sexualized. Is it because of what the dress? Because she wears a sexy dress? And of course, like any other fucking stereotype that you are you bring back an argument that i haven't seen in a couple of years now uh, not even an argument but a, a terminology you want to talk about the male gaze oh dear god it's fucking it's so cringe to fucking read this in a 2023 fucking article oh it hurts for anybody who isn't well versed in the stupidity of game journalists the quote-unquote male gaze is just a term they like to throw out that essentially any woman who has any, like, possibility of being sexualized, like, if a woman shows off anything, if she has cleavage, if she has hips, if she has long legs, if she has an ass, if she literally has any type of feature that could be sexualized showing in a video game, it automatically causes the male gaze. Essentially, the male gaze is just when men check out women. That's that's really all it is. And the fact that you use that when you're talking about Ada is so much more ridiculous because you... Uh, so, like, you talk about her being sexy. You specifically say she is equal parts sexy and mysterious. So you even admit that she is a sexy character. 
So basically what you mean is that because she is written as a sexy character, a sexy, dominant, powerful character, that she's just automatically fallen prey to the male gaze. But like, how does this work? I, I still don't get it after all these years. Just because a female or a female character is attractive and men check her out because she's attractive, that's wrong? Like, just don't have eyes, men. Just just don't, do not ever look in the general direction of a woman ever again. Otherwise, you're a absolute piece of shit sexist. Got it? Awesome. Cool. Moving on. Now, finally, we get to the part that I'm probably going to enjoy the most. Is where I get to talk about the characters of Resident Evil. Because Resident Evil is a series that I have grown up on. The series is uh, pretty much as old as I am at this point. And I have played every single Resident Evil that's ever been released, and I've played through every single one of them several times. So I know pretty well all the in and outs of almost every character. And you want to go on and say that the women of this series, not just this game, but this series, are all just there for sexualization and they are inferior to their male counterparts. That is so ridiculously far from the truth that you're either deliberately being dishonest to make your argument sound better to people who do not know the game or the game series, or games journalism and how fucking horrible you people are, and how willing you are to trash the very thing that you write about every day that gives you a fucking job, or you've just never picked up a Resident Evil game before in your life. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's probably you're just being inherently, like, intentionally dishonest in your arguments. Because you go on to mention characters by name. So, the timid immaturity of Rebecca Chambers. Okay, Rebecca first appeared in Resident Evil 1, the original. Note that you call her immature. Well, in the story, she is... An 18-year-old rookie. Yeah, she is fresh out of fucking high school. If there's not a person who gets the right to be immature, I mean, for fuck's sakes. Like, yeah, it, the character's going to be immature if you are an 18-year-old fresh out of fucking high school rookie that's never even been involved in actual police work yet. And you're going in, into what they went into on the Arclane Mountains. Like, I don't see that as really... A bad thing that she's immature. I, I don't even see how this is like an example for your argument. A character is allowed to be immature. That's not inherently bad. But I know what you mean because you're not talking about Resident Evil Zero where she's the star of the game, right? You're not talking about that one where she is way, way, way better as a character and more fleshed out and actually like feels like a real character because all the fucking people in Resident Evil 1 because of the horrible writing and the terrible laughable voice acting all of the people seemed ridiculous and over the top and not in good ways like really 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 bad right it was so bad that it's good now it's one of the most memeable games that's ever come out in the history of video games that shit is still fucking quoted today and used in stream notifications and as fucking different, like, memes that get thrown up on, like, YouTube videos and shit. It's still laughed at today that it was so bad. It's so bad that it's now good. Because it was so bad, it's become funny. How in the fuck are you going to sit here and judge a character off of a video game with that type of reputation? Because I know you're not judging Rebecca off of either A, Resident Evil Zero, or B, the appearance that she had in, I believe, Resident Evil Damnation. I can't be 100% certain on that, but I believe that was the animated movie that she was in, where she is a main reason for the victory that happens between uh, her, Chris, and Leon as characters. She's the one that, like, spoiler alert, she's the one that, like, synthesizes a cure, okay? So, 
<laughs> like she's not some immature damsel in that movie and she's not in Resident Evil Zero either. Resident Evil Zero, she is the star who has taken surprise and a, on a train by zombies and leeches and giant scorpions <laughs> and still comes out the other side after watching her entire team fall prey to these. Multiple, multiple men die, whereas Rebecca is strong enough to survive through. But yeah, you're right. She's a weak character that's just there for sexualization. Sure. Fuck. Especially, like, how are you going to call her in the original, uh, like, a sexualization? The game's graphics are so poor back then, you can barely tell what it is you're looking at, let alone try and sexualize the polygons. It's ridiculous that you would try and make this statement. I hope that that's not what you're trying to say and include Rebecca as one of the ones that is sexualized, but given that your very next one is about the nonsensical miniskirts once worn by Jill Valentine. <sighs> Again, the graphics of this game make it so difficult to actually sexualize anything. You can barely tell what you're looking at. For fuck's sakes, like the characters are not like high definition. Have you looked at the fucking face model that they've used for Jill Valentine in the original uh, Resident Evil 3? It's actually like nightmare fuel now when you like blow it up to high resolution. It's fucking nightmare fuel. It looks like a weirdly drawn on like, well, you know, those Lego characters, the Lego people, like one of those faces that's on there. It looks like that and it's creepy. But yeah, I'm sure, you know, that's very sexualized because she wore mini skirts. Ah, uh, you know, that really popular clothing style back in the 90s when this game was made, when this game is taking place. Yeah, they really sexualize her. But now I get to talk about the rest of the characters. Because again, you name these two off by name, but you don't want to go into any of the others. You don't want to talk about all the other female characters, because guess what? Actually, when doing this video, when arguing against your pathetic excuse for an article... I realized that every single Resident Evil game that has ever been made, you either can or have to play as a female character. Not only a female character, but a female character that is well in control of the situation. Well, as well in control as you can be in a zombie apocalypse, I suppose. But it's all female characters that defend themselves that are I would consider strong. I mean, we can literally go game by game, right? Resident Evil 1, you can play as Jill Valentine. And I would love to see how you could sexualize that outfit, the police outfit that she's wearing, that again, and if we're going by the original, is like, <laughs> it's literally almost, I can't even tell what I'm looking at. Because again, the game uh, Resident Evil 1 released in 1996, I believe. Um, so then Resident Evil 2, oh, by the way, in Resident Evil 1, uh, the remake, I don't remember for the original because it's been so long since I've played the original. But in Resident Evil 1 remake, if you play as Jill, you can actually choose to save or let Barry die. You can choose to save or let Chris die. You are the strong one in that game if you play as Jill. And it's the same if you play as Chris, though. It gives you almost the same experience, regardless of which character you choose. So then Resident Evil, let's go with Resident Evil 2. Alright, you get to play as Claire Redfield, Chris's little sister, who shows up to find her brother because Claire is just such a fucking absolute badass biker that she just, like, shows up to the city and search for her brother when she knows that she doesn't know there's a zombie apocalypse happening, but she knows that, you know, the city's been quarantined and, like, there's things going on in Raccoon City and all these weird reports of people being murdered. She knows that that's going on and Chris goes silent. So she goes, fuck it, I'm going there and finding the motherfucker my goddamn self. Then she runs into Leon. Leon does save her because, not because she's a female, but because he has a gun and she doesn't because he's a cop and she isn't. And... So she watches Leon save her ass, shoots some fucking rando zombie in the head, jumps in the fucking cop car with him, speeds off towards the fucking RPD, finds a gun in the glove box, the fucking cop car crashes because Leon can't fucking drive, what the fuck, and 
any of the games that he's ever been in, honestly. He crashes literally every vehicle he's ever been in. I swear. Including a plane. But they get separated and they agree to meet at the police station. So Claire makes her way through the city to the police station, does everything on her fucking own with very, very limited help from Leon throughout the way. And she then finds Sherry, protects Sherry, helps get her through it, rescues her when she gets infected by Birkin, and gives her the cure, finds and gives her the cure, all while fighting Birkin, and makes it out of the city without any real help from Leon. They just happen to meet up at the very end of the game. So, like, again, perfect example of a strong-ass fucking female character. Resident Evil 3, Jill Valentine, again, solo through the city, th solo through Raccoon City to escape the outbreak. I, I don't, I don't really need to go into detail on how she's a strong character. She literally fights fucking Nemesis, one of the most iconic video game antagonists or enemies in video game history, right? Everybody knows who the fuck Nemesis is. And we're back to Resident Evil 4, where you have Ada. And I would actually ar argue that Ashley is somewhat of a strong female character. Yes, she's not maybe physically strong, she doesn't fight, but, I mean, mentally she fucking goes through being mind-controlled, infected with this plug on mind-controlled, and seeing all of this horrific shit happen, and comes out the other end pretty unscathed. But again, we have Ada for a good, strong female character in that one. Resident Evil 5, you have Sheva. Sheva goes through the same shit that Chris does, comes out the other side. Jill is the partner that you get to use with uh, when uh, assaulting uh, Wesker when they're trying to find uh, Spencer. And that's in a DLC for Resident Evil 5, not the main game. Resident Evil 6, you have, I believe her name's Heather as Leon's partner. Uh, you have Sherry returning, all grown up from Resident Evil 2. She ventures out to find Jake. And in order to find, use his blood for a cure, they fucking blow up a goddamn train, for fuck's sake. Um, RE7, Mia. Yes, as much as I am not a fan of Mia because I don't like her as a character. Because, again, she's kind of the, one of the main reasons of the whole uh, Evelyn escape and uh, cause of the mole. She, you know, she worked for the people and she kind of just gets a write-off of like, oh, now you have to like her because Ethan, uh, they work each other, they work at out their fucking marriage and get back together with each other and they move off and have a baby and like all this other shit so like you can't dislike her really now because you like Ethan and you like Rose so you can't hate Mia but still I'd say she's a strong character uh she literally saves Ethan from the mold and Evelyn when uh he gets taken uh by the boat and she goes through and uh, fucking wrecks shit all the way up to him Rips him out and pushes him away before she gets mind controlled back. Um, RE8, you have Rose. I mean, you could argue that there are strong female characters within the game of RE8, but those are all antagonists and more so monsters than you would really say, like, just inherently strong female characters. So I don't feel like those are good examples. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with Rose. The person you get to play as in the DLC, Ethan and Mia's daughter, who gets tricked by Miranda to go, again, spoilers, I guess. Uh, she gets tricked into going and trying to remove her powers. She gets tricked into going into the mold and finding Miranda there. And she fights and kills fucking Miranda, something not even Ethan was capable of doing. Like, yeah, Ethan... Her fucking father. I'm sure you'll find that sexist somehow too, because you know a father protecting his daughter is fucking sexist in your goddamn twisted, fucked up mind. But yeah, Ethan saves her ass a couple of times when she's still figuring shit out. But she ends up saving Ethan as much as she can and using her powers and killing Miranda. I also forgot to mention the uh, side games that are not numbered releases um there are strong female characters in literally every one of those uh code veronica obviously you plays claire um this returning strong female character you have revelations all of the characters in the revelation series are strong female characters like i i don't understand um especially revelations 2 revelations 2 is literally just female characters aside from barry 
So, again, good example of all strong female characters that are not sexualized in literally any way. But clearly, you just don't know Resident Evil. Because that's all this game series is, is strong female fucking characters. You picked the wrong fucking series to try and make this argument because you're an idiot. You're either just really disingenuous with what you're trying to say or you're an idiot and you've never played the fucking games and anyone who has played even 10 minutes of any of the games in this series can immediately point out how you are wrong and they can see through your absolute bullshit this is not the series to try and attack for having sexualized women or weak women that just play damsel in distress roles because almost none of the fucking females in this entire series do that. Ashley is probably the only example and not even that is really accurate as I've already discussed in this video. So I don't even know why you made this fucking article other than just to be this toxic fucking piece of shit that for some reason wants to stir controversy when there is none to be had. You're the same person who said that RE5 is too racist for a remake. I'm convinced that games journalists like you are literally only existing at this point to be made fun of. I don't know how you people still have jobs. I don't know how you people still write in any serious capacity because all you write is stupid shit like this that isn't even factually accurate. You just want to make everything that isn't a controversy controversial. You want to view the world through this fucking lens of being a victim no matter what. You will actually, you try harder to be a victim than to do anything else. You've tried harder very clearly throughout all of these articles that I have read by you. You've tried harder to be a fucking victim than to just write a good fucking article involve, involving gaming. How about you go and talk about an actual video game in terms of the gameplay, the story, or the mechanics, the graphics, anything else. Stop just covering fucking hit pieces that are talking about racism, sexism, transphobia, blah, 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 all bullshit that you're so fucking delusional talking about stay the fuck away from video games if this is all you're gonna say because you clearly clearly don't know what the fuck you're talking about anyway i hope everyone else enjoyed and will agree with me in saying fuck game journalists like this but i hope you all enjoyed and i wanted to bring attention to the fact that i am now throwing the community discord in the description of these videos I'm going to only promote it towards the end of the videos. That way, it's mostly going to be people who, you know, actually had an interest in the video and what I say long enough to make it to the end. So if you feel like you want to just have a conversation with people of like minds or hell, if you want to join the Discord and argue with me, that is completely within your capabilities. I do not mind a good discussion. As long as it's in good faith and we can sit down like adults and have a discussion, please, I am all for it. But if you want to just be notified of when I'm release new videos or go live on Twitch or anything else, feel free to just join in on the community. Again, link for the Discord in the description below. I will see you all next time.